this is the last lecture on computer architecture and we conclude uh, the series of lectures. So, uh, today we will go back to what we had set out to do in this course and see where do we stand. So, let us uh, try to review what have we learnt in this course. Uh, as it was spelt out in the first lecture, uh, we had uh, listed a few course objectives. Uh, the objective was try to learn how computer work, what is the basic principle, how we analyze the performance, how we design and build the computers and uh, how do we uh, improve performance, what are the issues which have to be kept in mind in the modern processors, issues like caches or memory hierarchy, pipelining and so on. <coughs> so, in summary, uh, we have covered various topics, we talked about how performance is defined, we took a specific instruction set and uh, discussed some core instructions. Then we uh, went out to build an ALU, uh, which will carry out those instructions and then we constructed a complete processor to uh, execute these instructions. We saw the concept of pipelining to improve the performance, uh, we saw that memory is hierarchical not just a flat array of uh, words and finally, to complete the picture we talked about input output. Uh, we began by uh, looking at how the technology has been moving over several decades and uh, this was a table which we had looked at on the first lecture. I have added one more entry here, the last one. So, you would notice that there has been an exponential growth in uh, <coughs> performance, what you can get out of a single monetary unit. So, performance per rupee or per dollar, uh, the, the figures here are of course, uh, relative values. So, so, taking what you get from a vacuum tube system as one, uh, other figures have been projected. So, there has been an exponential growth, this has also divided uh, the computers historically into generations. So, our uh, focus uh, while talking of architecture has been on the, fo on the interface of hardware and software, where the hardware and software meet, which is essentially uh, machine instructions as seen from the program end and uh, the building blocks like uh, ALUs, adders, registers, multiplexers, buses and so on as seen from the hardware end. The small set of instruction where we really focused is shown here, these are for MIPS processor and uh, it is a processor of what is called uh, risk variety, reduced instruction set computer. Uh, on the whole, there are uh, very few instructions and simple instructions, each instruction try, tries to do one particular <coughs> task and not mix many things. The advantage of such a choice uh, is in uh, building a fast processor. Uh, ease of doing pipelining and also ease of generating code. So, uh, th there are three formats only in this R, I and J and uh, the instruction we talked about uh, nicely fall into these three categories. <coughs> the performance was an important issue which we discussed in the beginning and a uh, lot of discussion was uh, pertaining to how to improve performance. Of course, there are other uh, aspects when you design a system, uh, we have not gone into all of those, particularly uh, power consumption is very important and uh, unless that is checked, the, the power being produced or power being dissipated in the processor chip per let us say square centimeter is increasing tremendously and uh, you need elaborate arrangement for cooling otherwise system cannot work. So, uh, from performance point of view, we looked at two possible directions, execution time and throughput. Uh, throughput is a measure which is at a gross level, when you look at collectively uh, several tasks being executed by a processor, but for an individual user, uh, execution time is important, which can be related to three basic uh, parameters, the instructions executed in a program, the instruction count cycles per instruction on an average and the clock period or clock rate. 
the factor which influence these are uh, varied the compiler which generates the code <coughs> instruction set architecture what instruction you have chosen micro architecture that means how you implement those instruction and the underlying technology so uh, wh when we try to improve performance it's important that we look at what is the common case and uh, try to make that fast okay if if we cannot make everything fast at least make the common case fast so now uh, having studied a few instructions from programming point of view and uh, developing some understanding of what performance means we had set out to design uh, the alu first and then the complete processor so alu is is the heart of the processor which carries out all arithmetic and logical operations and uh, its design was done by looking at one cell which can be repeated for every bit and the construction was uh, done by simply looking at various functions it has to perform uh, put hardware in place for each of these and then have a multiplexer to select one of the outcomes so effectively it it does all the operations simultaneously but you look at the result of only one of these and this is repeated uh 32 <coughs> times there is additional logic shown here which uh, does the equality comparison so so this is the alu we had worked with uh while doing so we had ignored somewhat complex operations like multiply and divide uh which for which we primarily discussed iterative algorithm which take uh 32 steps and in each step try to produce one result of the one bit of the result so this is a multiplier design this is one of the divided design we had and uh, you can notice similarity of the structure here uh, we, we had lot of variations for example division was done in a restoring manner or non restoring manner so so this is a non non restoring division uh, it's uh, usually possible to merge the multiply hardware and divided hardware if you if you look at the commonality there's lot in common uh, the key difference is that uh, the big register at the bottom shifts right in one case and left in other case so if you make it possible to shift it both ways and uh, organize the control appropriately uh, the then uh, make this uh, this unit capable of doing addition or subtraction both you can have a, a single unit which does multiplication or division depending upon how you exercise the control uh, so this uh, design uh, we saw how we could speed it up uh, you you could for speeding up uh, addition which you discussed earlier you could use uh, carry look at technique okay uh, which takes from a uh, time of the order of o n to o log n and that is a tremendous improvement to speed up multiplication we looked at uh, possibility <coughs> of using uh, carry save adders in an array form so instead of doing iteratively uh, you you uh, expand it out into uh, adders which add all the partial products and use carry save additions so that improves the delay by a significant factor then uh, noticing the limitation of uh, integer operations we talked about floating point operation uh, there are varieties of ways in which you can represent numbers and uh, our focus was on a standard method which is commonly followed now that is IEEE 754 standard uh, there are issues of uh, how you detect overflow and underflow so underflow is an additional feature which occurs in floating point we saw how these operations are performed uh, we also looked at the need for accurate arithmetic with the help of uh, guard round and sticky bits <coughs> the notation provides for some special numbers such as uh, uh, denormalized numbers infinity and uh, something which is indeterminate and so on and we had a, a brief look at <coughs> how floating point operations are done in MIPS what are the instructions which support uh, this type of arithmetic <coughs> then uh, having understood how basic operations are done we looked at the entire process of instruction execution starting from 
fetch of fetching of instruction, picking up the operands, doing the operation and then putting the result back in place. So, uh, the first design we looked at was a single cycle design, where the entire instruction execution is finished in a single cycle. And uh, the control here is a simple combinational circuit, which looks at opcode uh, and uh, associated function bits and tries to generate control for various components within the data path. So, what you are seeing in uh, black and white is the uh, data path and what you are seeing in orange is the control. So, so there, there is a when you design you have a clear distinction made between the data and the control which eases the task substantially. So, having designed this we notice the limitations of such a design uh, from various points of view and went on to a design which is multi cycle design. Okay, so, so that improves the performance, uh, helps in uh, sharing the resources and also uh, makes it possible to implement much larger variety of instructions. So, in this the control although not shown here is, is a sequential circuit okay, which steps through various states and uh, takes the instruction through various cycles. So, th this flow chart actually indicates how various instructions are done in uh, multiple cycles. Each box represents activity which is done in one clock cycle. So, so now here it is very crucial to see how instruction execution is divided into cycles, because that determines that influences both the CPI. Okay. So, so, CPI is very obvious for example, if, if there is an instruction which is following let us say this path okay it takes 5 cycles okay you have 5 you go through 5 boxes uh, but what you have put in these boxes determines how wide the clock has to be so clock period has to accommodate uh, the slowest of the activity which you have put in this box so uh, you have to divide these things distribute these things in a uniform manner as far as possible <coughs> now going further uh, we looked at uh, pipelining of the design which where each individual instruction takes multiple cycles, but uh, instructions get issued uh, hopefully every cycle. <coughs> and uh, this design was obtained in a very simple manner by looking at the single cycle design and introducing registers which separate pipeline stages. So, in terms of concept it is very simple, but uh, we immediately notice some hazards, uh, structural hazards, data hazards and control hazards. So, structural hazards are relatively simpler to handle, you try to provide enough resources, so that there are no conflicts occur. But data and control hazards are quite inherent uh, in partly in the hardware which you design and uh, partly in the way uh, program logic is there. So, uh, one needs to provide for uh, extra control to take care of these things. So, uh, for example, for uh, flushing out instructions uh, which are fetched when you are trying to take a branch decision. Okay. So, the wrong instruction may get fetched and you have to flush them later on. Uh, for handling data hazards, uh, you try to reduce the delay by forwarding data, uh, so that the instruction which is dependent and looking for some, some data gets it as early as possible. So, the data forwarding paths are not shown here. But, but there are uh, a number of possible paths, so that uh, data flow from instruction to instruction can be done as fast as possible. Uh, after having uh, uh, spent several lectures on uh, processor design, we went on to discussion on memory, which was uh, seen to be as a hierarchical structure rather than a flat structure. And the basic idea there was to uh, try to get an advantage of uh, fast SRAM and try to get the bulk of uh, inexpensive and uh, uh, dense DRAM at one end and also uh, taking it further get the advantage of size of what you can get on a disk at an uh, in, in inexpensive manner. So, uh, a typical cache organization is uh, shown here, uh, this one in particular shows 
a four way set associative cache. Okay, uh, we, we looked at three organizations direct mapped cache, <coughs> set associative cache and fully associative cache. So, most commonly what is used in practice is set associative cache with varying degree of uh, associativity. So, this one is four way associative uh, in the sense that a given block of uh, data or instruction can be placed in one of the four alternative slots and uh, uh, this number 4 gives you the kind of flexibility you have in placing a block <coughs> more more is larger is the number larger is the flexibility but a larger number also implies uh, more hardware cost okay because you need to uh, look at more places in an associative manner or in by doing parallel comparison uh, but this uh, parallel comparison and associative uh, search also has an effect on the clock periods. So, typically as you increase the degree of associativity, the clock period becomes larger and larger which means there is an adverse impact on performance. Uh, the positive impact of on performance is that by giving more flexibility, you reduce the number of misses. You are unlikely to uh, throw away uh, data which you would have brought earlier, but are throwing away because of conflict because that space is required by something else. Uh, the uh, other level which is commonly used other level of hierarchy is virtual memory, where uh, main memory forms one level and the, the disk stores uh, uh, the next level. <coughs> so, mapping here is done through a page table which also is in the memory uh, either in physical or in virtual uh, to, to speed up this process of accessing uh, virtual memory, we have an associative buffer called TLB or translation leukocyte buffer. <coughs> okay, finally, we moved on to uh, I O. So, uh, putting I O together, you form the complete system and uh, this is a diagram which I had projected in the first uh, lecture. So, you, you have various parts here, this is the processor, there is a memory, there is a bus and there is a I O subsystem. So, physically you can relate it to uh, what you see if you open uh, a computer. So, this is a processor okay, with the heat sink and fan, you do not actually see the processor, it is covered with a heat sink and a fan on top of it. Uh, these are memory modules. These are uh, PCI slot, which is a which is a bus we had seen, and uh, some of these slots have been plugged in. Uh, this probably is a network card, and I think this takes care of. Uh, uh, I'm not sure, maybe keyboard and mouse, or uh, okay. So, so th this uh, this one is actually not on PCI. This is a uh, graphics display card. Uh, so, some of these things could of often be uh, on the board. Okay. So, this is not a very uh, very recent board, it, it will be some 2, 3 years. Uh, so, what you are seeing here as a separate card could also be part of motherboard, uh, but uh, as we had seen that the, the graphic display uh, is the most demanding uh, in terms of performance and it is uh, connected as close as possible to the, the process of memory interconnection, whereas uh, other things might sit on a backplane bus or an I O bus. So, uh, these are I O devices, this is a disk drive and this is a complete motherboard. Okay, now, why have we studied all this? Uh, so, these are the points of motivation which we had looked at. Uh, so, ideal thing would be that uh, you get an opportunity to design uh, a new architecture, a new instruction set, build the processor and so on, but that that is uh, practically speaking that would be a very rare opportunity. Uh, not many new processor designs take place. More common more likely 
situation is that you might design or build a new version of an old architecture okay uh, or uh, from software point of view this knowledge could be useful uh, to write better software okay. uh, either at application level if you have an understanding of uh, uh, what architectural uh, compulsions are you you can actually write better software or if if you are in a compiler or operating system area again then of course a deep understanding of architecture is very very important even if you are not uh, doing a technical development of hardware software uh, understanding of architecture and performance issues is important when you are for example purchasing a computer so now all these uh, points were with desktop computing or general purpose computing in mind but if you look at uh, embedded computers uh, then then you you might be doing much more of this there, there are much more many more opportunities and uh, it could be basically designing uh, you you might end up in designing a new processor or actually adapt uh, building a complete solution out of uh, a processor used as a component so it, it's interesting at this stage to look at the uh, statistics here about uh, how many processors of various kinds typically get sold every year so uh, three classes of systems are uh, put here in this table servers uh, desktops and embedded processors so the figures are in millions and uh, they are given year wise over last uh, uh, over f 5 consecutive years so you would uh, there are several observations you can make <coughs> one observation is that uh, the the volume is is varying by orders as you go from server to desktop to embedded okay the the numbers here are many more the second observation is that while servers are, are growing very very slowly desktop appear to be almost saturating uh, but uh, embedded are uh, if you look at this only as an aberration but if you broadly look at the curve th there there is a uh, very fast growth all right so <coughs> when you talk of uh, <coughs> uh, desktops uh, and you talk of uh, availability of these machines per person uh, you will talk of very small numbers okay for for example uh, if you if you look at uh, our own uh, community here uh, the, the number would be either one or maybe little less than one or little more than one uh, per person but embedded could be much much larger you you have uh, as i had mentioned earlier you could have embedded processes in uh, various uh, other devices various appliances your mobile phone and so on so uh, num number you can conceive of per person could be uh, uh, easily go to double digits so what are these embedded computers basically here you have these are processors which which are not seen as a general purpose computing device so, so they do some uh, intelligent function but but uh, you you don't uh, you you don't have users sitting there and programming them so they typically do fixed function or a fixed set of functions they operate in real time interact with the environment and uh, the the design process is uh, more involved we have not discussed that uh, some some of the courses which you might do as electives later on would address that issue uh, these typically require one to address the hardware and software design issues simultaneously as a combined hardware software co design problem and uh, a design has to be these are very size weight power and cost sensitive and therefore they have to be highly customized so uh, i i see tremendous opportunities of uh, uh, do, doing some interesting work in this area uh, where uh, the knowledge of this course would definitely be useful uh, the, the question is wh why uh, different processors why do you need different processors uh, for, for different types of things okay we talked of uh, servers desktop embedded uh, what is the difference between processor used in desktops, laptops, mobile phones and appliances like washing machine etcetera. 
So, so the difference comes in various aspects in performance or speed, difference in power consumption, cost and whether processor is for a general purpose uh, operation or, or, or it has to do a special purpose. Uh, this is a picture which I had shown earlier shows a Pentium processor and a, a microcontroller. Uh, this is an 8 bit processor, uh, it is actually processor plus memory. Okay. Uh, the, the program could be stored in the memory which is on there and it is a you, you would typically store a fixed program and uh, it could uh, repeatedly just execute that. Uh, so, uh, I, I looked at the third edition of the textbook we have been following and uh, uh, it, it talks of uh, lots of uh, real life example where uh, computers are used. Uh, in, in most cases these are embedded computers uh, and sometimes they are uh, augmented by general purpose computing also. So, uh, I will we'll look at uh, some of this briefly and uh, I will encourage you to see these interesting uh, possibilities. So, uh, I will go through some of these and uh, towards the end add a few uh, from my own personal experience. Okay, so, let us look at some of these. Uh, so, this talks of an attempt to uh, uh, take computers to uh, masses. Uh, so, so, basically uh, a low cost PC uh, which was uh, which has been designed by uh, a group of people for uh, uh, villagers. Uh, the idea here was to make it <coughs> uh, portable and low cost, so that affordability for people with the uh, uh, small means could be there. <coughs> It has no moving parts, and uh, it's uh, it's rugged. Uh, no no delicate things like uh, CRTs or hard disks. Uh, it uses flash memory instead of hard disk, LCD screen, and, and a, an inexpensive Intel 486 processor, which is a, a couple of generations behind. But uh, since those are available in cheap, uh, in with very low cost, that was used. It's powered by a car battery which can be charged by a bicycle, wireless internet cards which connect to a solar powered hilltop relay station <coughs> and uh, it, it connects to uh, the telephone system and uh, also to, to the internet. Uh, the OS is Linux and uh, it is being uh, localized in the sense that uh, uh, in, in the local language its communication is in local language, so that people who do not know English can also use it. Another attempt to do something similar uh, is from uh, Bangalore. You must have heard of Simputer. How many have heard of Simputer? Okay. So, so you, you would uh, recognize this. this it is a again uh, an attempt to build a small uh, uh, low cost computer and uh, this was actually initiated by a team in IIC Bangalore, a, a startup uh, which came out of IIC Bangalore. The processor used here is strong arm uh, which has low power consumption. Uh, again it is flash based, there is no hard disk, no moving part, display is LCD, uh, it has a modem Linux OS and uh, input output, there is no keyboard. Okay, so, you, you can this is a touch pad, so you can either work through icons or it also has uh, text to speech capability, so that uh, it, it can there is no speech input, but speech output is there. So, e even if you cannot read text for an illiterate person that could be uh, a, a reasonable medium of communication. So, uh, the, the information coming from computer can be uh, spoken out and uh, the input could be by touching the icons you, you can uh, look at the picture and convey your input as you can see what is happening here. Uh, this is an example of where 
computers and modern technology can help in carrying out uh, some scientific experiments. So, this is uh, uh, what you are seeing here is a redwood tree and uh, some scientists wanted to study uh, the, the, the biological phenomenon here. Uh, for example, how these tree becomes so tall, these are these are giant really giant trees and uh, they wanted to study whether they these trees absorb moisture from uh, atmosphere from fog. So, initial attempts were uh, to place lot of heavy equipment on this with lot of cables running around, but uh, then uh, subsequently it was replaced by uh, some simple uh, uh, sensors miniature battery driven wireless sensor which were placed on uh, trees and uh, because they are wireless the scientists could move around with laptop near the base and uh, the, the data which is collected could be simply communicated without having to climb <coughs> or without running uh, huge cables. This is an example of uh, computers trying to bring safety into uh, automobiles or uh, uh, in transportation system. So, the example is of uh, French TGV train system which is the fastest system and the key to safety here is the signaling system which is all computer based. Uh, what it tries to do is that uh, the entire uh, track system is divided into segments or blocks of uh, size 1.5 kilometers. So, at, at places they are even shorter and essentially uh, sensors and computers and the signaling mechanism try to ensure that in each block or in each section there is at most one train okay? uh, because more than one would mean a disaster. <coughs> so, and, and the system issues commands to uh, the, the driver uh, who is supposed to uh, continue or stop and so on, but uh, there is also a computer there which can uh, take the command then act if necessary if, if the human operator fails to do so. So, let, let me go back to this list and uh, mention some of the other examples. So, I am not putting the details here. Uh, so, so, this is uh, an example of a news medium which is uh, which is uh, different from traditional uh, TV or newspaper medium. <coughs> so, uh, basically uh, from uh, web sources uh, the, the news could be collected and published automatically and uh, th that crosses uh, the, the typical <coughs> excuse me regional boundaries and regional biases. Okay. So, so it could be a totally different non-traditional non-local source of news. Uh, the next one is about uh, how computers can help in uh, preserving the old uh, pieces of art by using uh, image processing techniques and the last one is use of computers in uh, diagnostics through uh, MRI and such techniques. <coughs> okay, I want to add uh, at the end uh, some interesting uh, applications we have been involved in, in uh, developing uh, together with the uh, startup we have uh, you must have heard of critical solutions which is in our business incubation unit. So, so these are pictures of uh, device for scanning underbelly of a car or any vehicle in general for security. So, uh, what uh, the security is becoming an increasingly important concern with the because of uh, terrorism there. So, so one, one would like to prevent uh, some dangerous thing being attached at the bottom of a car and uh, then the car being brought into a premise and it may explode later on. So, so, you need to uh, scan the underbelly of the car. The traditional approach is to use 
a stick and a mirror. You, you might have seen that uh, uh, security people would carry a mirror and then uh, try to do that. The problem there are that the illumination is very poor, it is generally dark, there is not, I mean one goes through the drill, but uh, does not really uh, help you much. And at, at any given time, you see only very small part of the car. So, exhaustive checking is never possible. So, the idea here is to have uh, basically a camera based system. You have what you are seeing in this picture are four units. Each unit, uh, these bright dots you see are uh, LED displays, uh, LED uh, sources which emit light. Okay. And uh, in between, you are not seeing very clearly, but uh, there is a digital camera, video camera sitting there. <coughs> so, these lights illuminate, th this is a device uh, which is placed in a pit like this. Okay. And as the uh, vehicle drives over it, the, the bottom gets illuminated and uh, cameras take picture. Uh, but what happens is that, b because the gap between the camera and the bottom of the car is not too much, each camera gets only a limited uh, field of view. Okay, it sees only part of the car. So, as car is passing, a camera would see only a small part and uh, each camera actually captures a video of uh, a, a strip of the car. So, uh, <coughs> now these video signals, you can see some cabling here. These are sent to a computer which is uh, somewhere on the side in a control room and uh, each video, first of all, each frame of the video uh, is taken together and uh, you, you generate a single picture. Okay? You, you stitch these together, it requires sophisticated uh, computer vision techniques to form a, a strip of uh, image and then these strips are put together to form a complete image. So, what you get is like this and uh, if, you care, if you see carefully, you might be able to see a boundary of the strips. Uh, although I have shown four here, but this image was taken with three. So, the whole image is divided into three strips actually, but uh, the stitching is done nicely. So, that you do not really, unless you are careful, uh, you do not see the boundaries. So, so you could see the role of a uh, computer, it is a it is a dedicated application, where a, a computer is performing uh, a single, but uh, fairly sophisticated task of creating this image out of three videos. <laughs> okay, uh, another example is uh, to automate the kind of process you would have seen on the entry exit gates, uh, one like IIT. So, here if you, uh, those who have driven cars across the gate know that uh, uh, the cars which are authorized, <coughs> which are registered with our security, they, they carry a sticker on the windscreen and uh, the person who is driving uh, is supposed to carry a card and the secure as you as you pass through the gate the security man has to check the card uh, look at the uh, identification number on the card identification number on that sticker which you have and see if the right person is driving the right car okay so now it's a workable system in principle but what happens in practice is that uh, uh, it is impossible to do it thoroughly. So, uh, you know one, one, once you start this, uh, you put this kind of process in place, it works right uh, nicely for a few days and then after that the security man will say, okay, go. Uh, th there is no time, no patience in people who are driving to wait and have it checked and also no patience uh, in the security people to really go through it thoroughly. So, here is an attempt to uh, do this automatically. Uh, what is required is that you have uh, a device installed in the car, uh, which carries a small uh, computer. Uh, so, so, in fact, it is a it is a variation of uh, what I showed you here, uh, not in this packaging, but in a different packaging. Uh, this this has uh, what is called an EEPROM uh, erasable and programmable read only memory. Uh, we uh, we have used a version of this which uses flash, <coughs> but basically same processor with same instruction set. So, a, a processor is sitting there uh, which 
communicates with uh, this pair of devices which is installed uh, on a on a pole near the gate. <coughs> so, so uh, this is connected to uh, a PC and uh, basically uh, th this the, the main thing here is an infrared source infrared uh, sender and receiver. This also is capable of uh, sending and receiving infrared signals. <coughs> And uh, instead of uh, a, a card where the number is printed, uh, which carries my identity as a driver, I would be carrying uh, a, a smart card. Okay, uh, let, let think. I would probably have one in my pocket. I can show you how it looks like. So, so this is uh, a smart card and uh, what you see uh, this golden thing is basically a chip which has a tiny processor and some memory in it. Okay. Uh, rest of it is just plastic to make it a credit card size uh, thing. So, uh, basically uh, th this carries the identity of the person who is driving. Uh, well, th these cards are used in variety of applications and, and um, so, so they could carry for example electronic cash also. Uh, so electron, electronic cash is essentially nothing but uh, a set of bits uh, ones and zeros. So in this case this carries identity of the person who is driving the car and uh, this identity is also known to uh, the, the control computer which is connected to the gate. The identity of the car is uh, actually uh, embedded in the microprocessor which is there inside this device. So, so this, this has to be inserted there and uh, 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 before you pass through the gate you, you insert this and as you are passing through the gate uh, this device which is on the gate will interrogate and uh, seek the identity. So, identity of the car and the driver would be encrypted and communicated to this. And then, uh, if if the two, they, the two will be checked against a database, which you have in the computer, and uh, then computer can be uh, used to either turn a light uh, green or red or open a, a barrier. <coughs> so uh, th there are interesting design issues which come up here. Uh, basically, since this is a battery-driven device. Uh, power consumption reducing the power consumption becomes extremely important. So, so you have to have this operation organized so that power consumption is minimized. So, I'll, I cannot go into details, uh, but of course, since uh, these are the last two are in house developments and those who are uh, interested can always contact us and find out more. Okay, so, I will uh, like to close at this note that there are numerous other areas uh, where specially designed computer based system could touch our lives. So, they are very interesting areas, very challenging and uh, uh, there, there are a lot of excitement which could be lying ahead of you. Thank you.